Hello everybody, it is Tony Turner and welcome to the market now as of Friday, July 5th at about noon Eastern and I hope all of you had a wonderful 4th of July. Well, the U.S. stocks are falling so far today, retreating from record closing highs set on Wednesday after a strong rebound in U.S. job growth in June dashed hopes of an aggressive interest rate cut by the Federal Reserve this month. The closely watched employment report led investors to scale back bets of a 50-point rate cut by the central bank at its policy meeting on July 30 and 31st. However, and there, of course there's always a however in the stock market, moderating great wage growth and mounting evidence that the economy is slowing sharply could still encourage the Fed to cut interest rates by a quarter point. So uh, that's something that will probably be debated the rest of the month. On that news, let's go on to three charts that could give us some insight into the week to come. As we always do, we're going to look at a daily chart of the S&P 500 spider, symbol SPY. Uh, this is the ETF that tracks our S&P 500 index. Now today when I captured this chart, the SPY was trading at $296.88 or about $29.68 on the S&P 500 itself. Now, it's really not very far from its new all-time closing high set on Wednesday, July 3rd. That came in at $298.80, so we're real close to the 300 or 3,000 mark on the S&P itself. And it did take out a recent uh, all-time closing high on June 20th at $295.86. Now, as we look at this, we do have an uptrend here. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty decent one, maybe getting a little ahead of itself here. Uh, I do think this 296, 297 may still act as resistance, but we'll have to wait and see, uh, as we always do, what will come in the coming week. Now, the RSI here, the 14-day RSI, our overbought, oversold indicator, has been bumping its head here on the ceiling, we can call it, of the 70 line when an asset ha when an asset's RSI momentum indicator moves up and over this line here then it usually means it well it means it's overbought and usually if it if it gets up over that line like it did back here in April usually we will see the asset the stock the ETF whatever it is uh, start pulling back a little as it just gets too overbought and we saw that happen back here in April but the RSI is not to that point yet. Kind of funny that it's making a lower high here. The RSI is making a lower high while the S&P 500 is making a higher high. Um, that may or may not mean a little negativity to here, but we'll have to see as we move into the next week. The RSI can bump along uh, up along this 70 line for quite some time as we can see back here in April and back again in February. So it's just something to kind of keep at your elbow, as I like to say, the knowledge that we are kind of in, a, in an area here that may, may need a little rest here uh, shortly. Okay, um, now new overhead resistance here uh, will come in, of course, at 3,000 on the S&P 500, 300 or dollars on the SPY or 3,000 on the S&P 500 um, and uh, we still have plenty of support here we've got price support if it should start down at uh, 296 that's down here uh, we have more support at 291 which is is down right in this area here was resistance is now support type thing at 291 of course at 288 at the 50 day moving average so the coming week may tell us a little more of course we've got a lot going on in the geopolitical arena and of course with the china tariffs so on that note let's go on and look at our next chart we're going to look at as we do many times at the invesco qqq as you all know, this is the uh, NASDAQ. This ETF represents the NASDAQ 100, a very important index in the market with top holdings of Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, and Alphabet. Um, today, when I captured this chart, 
the QQQ was trading at $189.93, just off its new all-time high. It rose to a new all-time closing high on July 3rd, Wednesday, at $191.44, right there. Uh, that was besting the prior all-time high, closing on uh, May 3rd at $191.11. So, you know, and I bet a lot of people are going to look at these two charts and say, does this mean a double top? Well, the SPY is making a new high moving up higher, although uh, double tops and double bottoms, the, um, the difference between, say, if we put a line along here, this would be pretty even if it started falling now. The Qs did. The SPYs moved up a little bit. Um, if, if one high is within 4% of the other high, uh, and the market starts down, 4% is considered to be legal and technical analysis for it. That's okay. That's close enough um, to say that it's in the same resistance area. Or if, it, if it's a double bottom, if one, if, if, if one um, of what we'll call the double bottoms, if one retracement is a little higher or lower than the other, as long as it falls within 4%, uh, that's legal resistance or support as far as technical analysis goes. Now in no way here do we have any uh, do we have any indication that this could turn into a double top and of course for most of us we certainly hope it doesn't. Um, we just we do need though in order for that not to happen at some point and it may not be next week and it may be for the QQQ to continue higher besting these recent highs at, at 191 and change and moving higher. Of course, we still do have, uh, if we do need to take a rest next week, uh, we do have support here at, down here at 188, down here at 188, uh, 185, uh, right down in, in this, let's see, right here in this area, 185. Of course, we've got these, uh, these gaps here. 184, the 50-day moving average, the green line you see here. And, and so there's lots of, of uh, price and moving average uh, potential support if the QQQ needs to take a rest here in the coming week. And of course, uh, July and August can be dicey months because so many people are on vacation and, and volume tends to move quite a bit lower. Um, so that it, they can be a little dicey and usually are. Not always, but, but usually. All right, so on that note, we'll have to see if the QQQ and the big cap momentum stocks can continue this strong uptrend next week or if they need to take a rest. Our final chart here is a holding of the, uh, is a, excuse me, daily chart of the ETFMG Prime Cybersecurity ETF, the HACK. It has 54 holdings. The top holdings are Cisco, Symantec, Parsons Corporation, Splunk, and uh, Palo Alto Networks. Now, uh, as you can see, it's kind of been, it came off these December, where's my cursor? Here it is. It came off these December lows here, down around 31.32, moved up in a nice V-shaped recovery, and outdid, of course, the last quarter of last year, moving up and kind of walking up at uh, premium to its 20-day, the red line moving average on this chart until it reached April highs here at about 42. Then it started falling April, May. A lot of companies started falling in May as our tariff talks slowed down and uh, China left the table. So uh, the, the uh, HACK came down here to about 37 during that time period. Since then, it's rallied. It's come back up. It could, could, could uh, potentially here, if you can see an inverse head and shoulders, and actually legally it has finished that, completed that pattern here. That would be the left shoulder, the head, and the right shoulder inverse to what it normally is. So this is good. This is a bottom reversal pattern as, as opposed to a top reversal if you took this head and shoulders and flipped it upside here. So this is good. It held support here at 38.50 when it came back and retraced, made a higher low here. 
So now that I've drawn all over this chart, and you can't see it as well, <laughs> when I captured this chart today, it's trading at $40.55. Now, uh, I would prefer here that the HACK come back down toward 40 before I buy it. Uh, if the, however, it, it may not hear me, and uh, if the market is strong next week, in the coming week, if it does continue higher, if it HACK continues higher, I may add shares of it to my portfolio. Uh, and I will use a close, an initial close below the 50-day, a close below the 50-day moving average. And that line is now coming in at $39.69. So again, right now it's trading at 40.55. I'll see what it looks like on Monday, Tuesday. Uh, and if I do buy shares, I will put a, a stop as a close below 50-day moving average now coming in at $39.69. That's my initial stop. If HACK continues to climb in coming weeks, I will turn my stop into a trailing stop. Uh, I do suspect uh, whether this move um, is a giant one or not, I do suspect that in the future the need for cybersecurity is going to grow. Uh, okay, so on that note, let's move on. Uh, to next week's coming uh, economic reports. But first, please join us this coming Monday, July 8th, for our next session of Tony's Market Club. If you're not sure how you can make more money in the market right now, let us help. During our session, we talk about which side of the market to trade. I give you a mini trading lesson. And I give you stocks, five stocks and ETFs that may become ripe for high potential trades with all the entries, exits, and profit targets you need. If you can't attend the live session, it's not a problem. The recording is available to all of our members just a few minutes after the session ends. This is a low-priced, high-value opportunity, and we've been in business now for 11 years doing this. You'll learn more about the market, how to trade more successfully, and how to make more money. So please join us. For more information, go to the link on this screen or simply click on the button below it. And now on to this next week's coming economic reports. Not many economic reports this coming week. Uh, Monday and Tuesday, nothing of impo imp uh, importance. On Wednesday, our usual crude inventories. On Thursday, we'll have the CPI or Consumer Price Index. Also, jobless claims and our usual net gas inventories. On Friday, we will have the PPI, the Producer Price Index. Again, join us for Tony's Market Club this coming Monday. Don't miss out on this fantastic opportunity to raise your trading skills and your trading profits. Until next week, keep green on your screen. I'm Tony Turner, and this is The Market Now.